Consider a region bounded by two or more equations. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the volume of a solid generated by revolving that region around a line. Notice that number 24 is calculator active, so we will use our graphing calculator as needed. Let's find the volume of the solid generating by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of the equations about the x-axis. Let's type this first equation into the graphing calculator and see what it looks like. I have typed the equation into y1. I'm going to hit zoom 6 and take a look. So we see that the graph makes kind of an S shape, almost like a sine curve between negative 2 and positive 2. So here's a rough sketch of what the curve looks like. The line y equals 0 is just the x-axis, so the region bounded by the first function and the line y equals 0 is now shown in yellow. If we rotate the region around the x-axis, we get this double solid, like two balloons. We can calculate the volume of this solid by analyzing one slice of the solid, which is a disk like this one. Step one of our three-step process is to come up with an expression for the radius of a single disk. When the radius is vertical like this, normally we subtract the top function minus the bottom function. But in this case, the bottom function is just zero. So really, it'll just be the top function. So an expression for the radius will be x times the square root of four minus x squared. Step two is to come up with an expression for the area of a single disk, which is always pi r squared. Since this is an expression for the radius, to turn it into area, all we have to do is square it and put pi out in front. Step three is to form an expression for the volume by integrating the area. So this is an expression for the area, so all we have to do is integrate, and I like to leave the pi out front. Because the disks are stacked up from left to right, I am integrating with respect to x. In this case, the limits of integration are obvious because the disks will stack from negative two to positive two. Remember that we already have x times the square root of four minus x squared typed in as y1. So we don't need to type that in again if we don't want to. So when we evaluate the integral on the calculator, it's going to look like this. So here we go, back to a blank screen. Let's first type in pi. And then for the integral, we hit the math button and we choose option nine. We are integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. Because we are going to have to square something, we need to put an extra set of parentheses in here. And we are squaring y1. So to access y1, we hit vars, switch over to y vars, hit enter, and choose y1. Close the parentheses and square it. Now we can just put the dx and we're done. So the volume is 26.808. If we had integrated by hand, we would have gotten 128 pi over 15. Number 28. Let's start by drawing the region bounded by these four equations e to the 1 fourth x power is an exponential function, so it's going to look like this. x equals 6 is a vertical line at 6. Of course, y equals 0 and x equals 0 are just the x-axis and the y-axis. So this is the region bounded by the four equations. If we rotate this region around the x-axis, we're going to get this solid that's sort of shaped like a horn. We can calculate the volume of this solid 
by analyzing a single slice, which is in the shape of a disk. Step one is to come up with an expression for the radius of the disk. So in this case, the length of the radius will just be the value of the red function. So uh, my expression for the radius is e to the x over 4 power. Step two is to come up with an expression for the area of a single disk. But the area of a disk will always be pi r squared. So since this is the radius, to turn this into an expression for area, I just need to square it and put pi in front of it. Step three is to make an expression for volume by integrating the area. Since this is an expression for the area, all I have to do is integrate this. And I tend to leave the pi out in the front. Um, now, this will be with respect to x because looking at the slice, we can see that the slices will be stacked up from left to right. So that's why we integrate with respect to x. And as far as the limits of integration, if I consider all of the slices, all of the disks, they are stacked up between 0 and 6. So we will integrate from 0 to 6. Before we integrate, we can simplify this a little. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. And when you multiply x over 4 times 2, the 2 divides into 4 and leaves a 2. So this is like x over 2, which I will write as uh, 1 half x. So we're going to do mental u substitution. If I did u substitution, I would let u equal 1 half x. And then u prime would be 1 half. The fact that u prime is a constant is a clue that you should probably be able to do this mentally. Because uh, if u prime is 1 half, then ultimately I'm going to end up dividing by u prime. I'm going to end up dividing by 1 half. And guess what? Dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So I'm going to end up with a 2 out in the front where the pi is. So I'm going to go ahead and do the antiderivative now, having made that little modification. So um, the antiderivative of e to the u power is e to the u power. It doesn't change. So I'm still going to have e to the 1 half x power. I just need to apply the limits of integration. So from 0 to 6. This tells me that I need to find the value at 6 minus the value at 0. I'm going to leave the 2 pi out in the very front, but here I have the value at 6 minus the value at 0. And uh, 1 half of 6 is 3, and e to the 0 power is 1. So this is the final answer. This is the volume of this solid of revolution. For number 31, we will find the region bounded by these three equations, and then we will rotate it around the y-axis to form the solid. But uh, let's see, I want to distribute this 3, I get rid of these parentheses. So I've got y equals 6 minus 3x, which is the same thing as y equals negative 3x plus 6. Let's make a quick sketch. Here is the line y equals negative 3x plus 6. y equals 0 and x equals 0 are the x and y axis. So this yellow region is the region bounded by the three equations. If we rotate the region around the y-axis, we get this inverted cone shape. To find the volume of the solid, we will start by analyzing a single slice, which is in the shape of a disk. But first, notice that if we consider all of the disks, they are stacked up vertically. So we will ultimately have to integrate 
with respect to y. For this reason, we need to rewrite the linear equation in terms of y. In other words, let's solve for x. Flipping the equation around, we have this. Subtracting 6 from both sides, we get negative 3x is equal to y minus 6. Dividing both sides by negative 3, we get x is equal to, let's say, uh, negative 1 third y. And uh, dividing negative 6 by negative 3 is positive 2. Finding the volume is a three-step process. Step one is to write an expression for the radius of a single disk. When the radius goes from left to right, you can find an expression by doing the right side minus the left side. The equation on the right is what we just found, negative one-third y plus two. The equation on the left is the y-axis, which is zero. So we don't really need to do minus zero. So this is an expression for the radius. <clears throat> Step two is to write an expression for the area of a single disk. The area of a disk is always pi r squared. Since this is an expression for the radius r, we can turn this into an expression for the area by squaring it and putting pi in the front. The third step is to write an expression for the volume by integrating the area. And since we already have an expression for the area, all we have to do is integrate. We are integrating with respect to y because if we look at all of the disks taken together, they are stacked vertically. So we integrate with respect to y. The disks would be stacked from 0 to 6. So those are the limits of integration. And the idea is when you integrate, you are adding all of the disks from zero to six. And if you add all of the disks, you get the volume. In order to integrate this, we need to expand this binomial. Let's do that off to the side. Negative one third y plus two squared is negative one third y plus two times negative one third y plus two we will need to distribute twice. Let's start by distributing negative one-third y. That's positive one-ninth y squared minus two-thirds y. Distributing the positive two gives us negative two-thirds y plus four. Combining the middle terms gives us this. Let's plug this back into the integral. Let's integrate term by term. Starting with the y squared, I increase the exponent by 1, so I have y to the third power. I divide by the new exponent, but 1 ninth divided by 3 is 1 27th. Next, I bring down the y and make it a y squared. 4 thirds divided by 2 is 2 thirds. The antiderivative of 4 is 4y. Next, I apply the limits of integration from 0 to 6, and I leave the pi out in front of the parentheses. This tells me I need to find the value at 6 minus the value at 0. Since every term does have a y in it, it's easy to see that the value at 0 is just going to be 0. So this is the value at 6 minus the value at 0. And if this is a free response question, I encourage you just to leave your answer like this. Uh, but to prepare for a possible multiple choice answer, um, we'll keep going. Applying the exponents gives us this. And performing the multiplication gives us this. The negative 24 and the positive 24 cancel each other out. So the final answer is 8 pi. This is the volume of the solid of revolution. Number 38. Let's start by sketching the region bounded by these four equations. We have memorized that the parent function y equals natural log x looks like this. 
and y equals 0 is just the x-axis. x equals 1 is a vertical line at 1, and x equals 3 is a vertical line at 3. So this is the region bounded by the four equations. Now that I look at it, I see that the green line, x equals 1, is not really needed as a boundary. Uh, it would change nothing if I were to erase it, so that's what I'm going to do. We need to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving this region around the x-axis. Revolving the region around the x-axis gives us a solid that's shaped a little bit like a sideways cone. To find the volume of the solid, we will start by analyzing a single slice, which is in the shape of a disk. The first step is to find an expression for the radius of a single disk. In this case, the radius stretches from the x-axis up to the red function. So the length of the radius will just be natural log x. So this is an expression for the radius. Step two is to form an expression for the area of a single disk. But the area of a disk is always pi r squared. Since this is an expression for the radius, to turn it into an expression for the area, all I have to do is square it and put pi out in the front. The last step is to find an expression for the volume by integrating the area. Since this is an expression for the area, all I need to do is integrate this. I'm noticing that all of the disks are stacked up from left to right. That's why I am integrating with respect to x. Specifically, the disks are stacked up between 1 and 3. So these are the limits of integration. This is not an expression that we have learned how to integrate. So let's use our graphing calculator to evaluate. Let's start by typing the pi that's out in the front. For integration, we hit math and then 9. We are integrating from 1 to 3. And then on the inside, we have natural log of x. Close the parentheses because we want to square the entire natural log. So we don't want to do natural log of x squared. So close the parentheses. And then now we are squaring it. And dx. So. 3.233. This is the volume of the solid of revolution.